But a lot of salespeople think it's the same thing. And unfortunately, a lot of customers think it's the same thing, too. I've got an obligation to a customer to be persistent. What do they show up here to do? Buy a car. And if I don't help them buy a car, they failed. Okay, and by the way, I failed, too. They leave without a car, and I leave without a penny in commission. So I'm going to be extremely persistent. I was trying to close this Subaru customer. Anybody ever sold Subarus? Mm -hmm. So I've, I've got this older couple. You can remember who they were if I think they were older couple. <laughs> the, the, young, the young lady salesperson had done a terrific job with them, and they were they and they were I mean, it had been discounted. I mean, it was a really good deal. So I'm going through every tactic I know, every concept, every strategy to show this these older people that it's they this was back when there was some sort of huge rebate on a particular Kia. And they were stuck because the rebate on the Kia was bigger than the discount on the Subaru. Well, the Subaru is a hot product. The uh, resale value alone would have completely overshadowed um, or outnumbered the discount they were getting on the Kia, but I could, couldn't get them to see it. And finally, this guy goes, I feel like you're putting pressure on me. I said, sir, <clears throat> I have a deep-seated belief this is the best thing for you. I know that um, Lisa did a terrific job. They showed you the right vehicle. This is a racehorse of a deal. You will come out way ahead in the long run if you keep the car three, four, five, or 55 years. You're going to be better off. That's why I'm so insistent. And please recognize this. I'm not trying to put any pressure on you, I'm, but I'm very persistent because of my belief in the deal. I said, however, if you don't say yes pretty soon, I'm going to start exerting pressure on you. And the lady goes, say yes, say yes. <laughs> Now, I said it with a smile, okay? I wasn't going to put any pressure on the guy, but he needed help making a decision. You're a closer, right? Yes, sir. Do people, do, do people need help? Yes, sir. When you presented the numbers to me, you didn't even close me. Did you? No. No. You got to ask people to buy a car more than once. If you just do it one, you know, when I, when I sit in front of a dealer that I'm trying to sell on my training services, which I don't even do anymore, um, what I used to say is, Andrew, I'm going to teach your people sit time. What do, what do you mean? Well, let me ask you a question. Once your salesperson takes the deal from the sales desk, how much time do they spend with the customer? Oh, hell, they're, they're right back. I said they're right back because they don't know what to say. That's not their fault. That's your management team's fault and you, the dealer. It's your fault. I will teach them to sit in front of a customer and engage them for five, six, eight, ten, twelve minutes. I can't teach them all how to close on the first pencil because I can't close them all on the first pencil. But I will. But the longer I stay in, if Andrew had finally had said, "Read my lips. I don't care about the 442. The 775 is too much." Guess what? I don't have any problem going back to the man, uh, my sales manager and going, I did everything humanly possible to get the dude to say yes. 